for marriage certificates and fees for funeral homes. So there were literally cradle to grave tax hikes and fees. And when he left office, there were only three states in the country that had created fewer jobs than Massachusetts. And by the way, one of them was Louisiana that had been hit by Hurricane Katrina. He, he talked a lot about small businesses, still talks about it. Says, I'm a, I'm a business guy, I know about small businesses. Massachusetts, when he was governor, ranked 48th in small business creation. And one of the two states that ranked lower was Louisiana that had gotten hit by Hurricane Katrina. So, you know, this is a guy who has a track record of saying one thing and doing something else. Yeah. Okay. On, the other, <laughs> the on the other hand, when, when I ran four years ago, I made promises too. I promised to cut taxes for middle class families, and I did by $3,600. to cut taxes for small business owners. And I did, 18 times. I promised to end taxpayer-funded Wall Street bailouts, and we have. And by the way, we got every dime worth of money that we used for the bank rescue, and we got interest with it too. I promised to take on those financial institutions that were charging too much for student loans. And we, as a consequence, were able to make college more affordable for millions of Americans. I promised I'd never walk away from the millions of jobs that were in jeopardy when the auto industry was on the brink of collapse. We decided to ignore Governor Romney's business advice when he said Detroit should go bankrupt. And now, America, we are building the best cars on Earth. Four years ago, I promised to end the war in Iraq, and we did. I promised that we would begin the transition in Afghanistan, and we are. Before we go after the terrorists who attacked us on 9-11, and thanks to the brave men and women in uniform, the courage of our Navy SEALs, Al-Qaeda is on the path to defeat and Osama bin Laden is dead. the theories that Governor Romney is now promoting, our businesses under the ideas we've been working with have added more than five million new jobs over the last two and a half years. Manufacturing, highest job growth in manufacturing since the 1990s. The unemployment rate is falling. Manufacturing's coming back to our shores. Our assembly lines are humming again. Housing prices are starting to pick up. Housing starts are on the move. We've got a lot of work to do, but New Hampshire, the country, has come too far for us to turn back now. We can't afford to go back to the policies that got us into this mess. We've got to continue with the policies that are getting out of the mess. We've got to move forward, and that's why I am running for second term. talk about it too much, I have a plan that will actually create jobs, that will actually lower our deficit, and will actually provide the middle class with a greater sense of security. And, and, and the good news is my plan, uh, the math actually adds up. If you want to check it out, you can go to barackobama.com slash plans. And I want you to share it with your friends and your neighbors and your co-workers. There are still people out there who are trying to make up their minds. And some of you who are here may be trying to make up your mind. Maybe your, your girlfriend dragged you out here. Uh, I don't know. You know. Maybe grandma said, you've got to go to the Obama rally. And you're still trying to figure it out. So I'm asking you to compare my plan with Governor Romney's. I want you to know what we're proposing, each of us. 
and see which plan is better for you and what is better for the future of America. So, number one, I want to end tax breaks for companies that are shipping jobs overseas. Yeah. Yeah. Small businesses and manufacturers who are putting down roots here, hiring American workers, creating American products stamped with three proud words, made in America. We can bring those jobs back to our shores. Number two, I want to cut our oil imports in half by 2020 so we control more of our own energy. Because of the work we've already done, increasing oil production, increasing natural gas production, but also emphasizing renewables like solar and wind and biofuels. Today, we are less dependent on foreign oil than at any time in the last two decades. That's good. That's good for your pocketbook. That's good for our national security. It's good for the environment. And one reason we've been able to, we have confidence we can keep on making progress is we've doubled the fuel efficiency standards for cars and trucks. So in the middle of the next decade, you'll go twice as far on a gallon of gas. I want us now to build on that progress. We've got to keep making those investments. I don't want fuel efficient cars and long lasting batteries and wind turbines and solar panels produced in China. I want them produced right here in New Hampshire. I want them made right here in America, and we can do that. Number three, we have to make it a national mission to educate our kids and train our workers better than anybody else in the world. I want to recruit 100,000 new math and science teachers because we know that's an area where we can't afford to fall behind. I want to train 2 million workers at our community colleges for the skills that businesses are hiring for right now. And I want to work with colleges and universities to make sure that tuition does not keep on going up because our young people can't afford the debt that they are taking on, and that's something we can do. Number four, my plan will reduce the deficit by $4 trillion over the next 10 years in a balanced way. We're going to cut out spending we don't need. We've already cut out a trillion dollars worth of spending. We can do more. But I'm also going to ask the wealthiest Americans to pay a little bit more so we can invest in the research and technology and education that will keep new jobs and businesses coming to America. And under the guise of reducing the deficit, I will never turn Medicare into a voucher system. Because no American should have to spend their golden years at the mercy of an insurance company. And by the way, I think we saw just this past week, we don't need a whole bunch of politicians in Washington, most of whom are male, making health care decisions for women. I don't think your boss or your insurance company should be making those decisions either. I believe women should be making their own health care decisions. That's why the health care law we passed put those choices in your hands, where they belong, and that's where they'll stay, as long as I'm president of the United States. All right. Uh, finally, number five, we're going to use the savings from ending the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan to put our people back to work. Let's do some nation building here at home. Let's rebuild our roads, our bridges, our schools. Let's lay broadband lines into rural communities all across the country. And as we're doing that, we're gonna be putting our veterans back to work. We've gotta serve them as well as they've served us. Because nobody who fights for this country should have to fight for a job or a roof over the heads or the care that they earn when they come home. So that's the plan we need, New Hampshire. That's how you build a strong, sustainable economy. That's how you make sure that middle class jobs that, that pay a good wage are out there. That's how you encourage new businesses to start here and stay here in America. That's how you increase take-home pay, pay, not not just by talking about it. That's how you you build an economy where everybody who works hard can get ahead. 
And that's what we can do together. But here's the thing, New Hampshire, it's now up to you. It's your choice. It's up to the young people who are here to choose a future that is worthy of all your dreams. It's up to the not so young people here, including me. I'm included in that category to, to make sure we're, we're leaving the kind of America we want for future generations. You know, you can, you can choose the top town policies that got us into this mess. But, but I think we, we need to build on the policies that are helping us to make real progress all across this country. You can choose a foreign policy that's reckless and wrong, or you can choose the kinds of leadership that I've provided, that's steady and strong. Yeah. You can choose to turn back the clock 50 years for women and immigrants and gays, or in this election, you can stand up for that basic principle enshrined in our founding documents that all of us are created equal. Black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Native American, young, old, rich, poor, gay, straight, able, disabled, no matter who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter where you come from, you've got a place in America. You can make it here if you try. That's what we believe. New Hampshire, we've been through tough times. But we've been through tough times before, and we are tough. We always come out on top. We always bounce back. Because we pull together. Because we look after one another. Because we don't leave anybody behind. Because when we succeed, we, we, we prop that door open and bring those who are following behind us. We pull them through. That's who we are. Our destiny is not written for us, it's written by us. We don't go backward, we, we look forward to that, that distant horizon, to that, that new frontier. We imagine a better America and then we work hard to make it happen. That's who we are. That's why I'm asking for your vote. And if you give me your vote, I promise you, you will always have a president who hears your voices, who will fight for your families, spend every waking moment thinking about how to make your lives a little bit better. New Hampshire, I still believe in you. I need you to keep believing in me. So come on the with me and roll up your sleeves with me. Knock on some doors with me. Make some phone calls for me. We'll win Hillsborough County again. We'll win New Hampshire again. We'll finish what we started. And we'll remind the world why the United States of America is the greatest nation on earth. God bless you.